Welcome to Pearls of Wisdom, your guide to extraordinary weddings and events. I'm your host, Ashley Miner, and we're here to share expert insights and inspiring stories. Let's dive into the art of creating unforgettable moments. Okay, welcome to Pearls of Wisdom, my friend Morgan, Morgan Lee Photography. I'm very excited to have you here. I know that you're a little apprehensive. Yes, I'm very quiet, so we'll see. (laughs) But you're not. You keep saying that, and I'm like, but you're not. You're not a quiet person. Once I get to know you, I'll open up more, yes. Yeah, yeah. We have a lot of fun on event days, which is why I feel like I'm like, no, you're going to be great. You're conversational. You're super fun. You're the best. Thanks. Yeah. Well, thanks for having me. I'm excited. I'm glad that you're here. So, okay, tell me who you are. Give me kind of like your background and how you got to this point. So, I'm Morgan. Awesome. Welcome. <laughs> Morgan Lee Photography. Um, so, in photography, I got started in like 2011, 2012. I was like freshman and sophomore of college. Just kind of doing it for fun. I did like high school seniors, families, things like that um for a while never really wanted to do weddings never thought I could do weddings had no desire to be in weddings um but I was just any way I could make income of by shooting doing photography I was willing to do whatever so I I kind of built up a good senior photography program I had like a whole rep program a bunch of girls it was consistent where I was like I can make a good income doing this I don't need to have another job anymore. So I quit my job that I had at the time, just doing seniors and families. And then I reached out to a photographer in Jeff at the time, Lindsay Penaleo. And I really admired her and her work. And I was like, if I can go work a wedding on a weekend and make good money, that'd be great. Yeah. Um, so I went and I reached out to her. She had me come along with her in 2015. Um, so I did her season then. Um, let's see. Let's see, I forget. You're great. <laughs> I forget my history all the time. I'm like, I'm like was that in 2000? Yeah, it was. I don't, I, don't I know. know. I'm like, so that was 2015. I started doing weddings with her. So I really enjoyed going along with them. Her, it was her and her husband and another girl. They did video too on the days that I went. And we had a really good time. So we'd do like an eight, 10 hour day and it would feel like two hours had passed. So it was a lot of fun where I was like, oh, this doesn't feel like work. I could do this more often. So I- I Maybe weddings don't suck. Yeah, I was like, maybe it wouldn't (laughs) be so bad, but still at the same time, like I always told her, I have no, I have no whatever. I don't want to get into weddings. Like that's not my goal. It really wasn't at the time. Um, And then people would reach out to me, friends, family, like, can you do a wedding? Can you shoot mine? I'm like, "Eh, maybe not. Yeah. I just, it's not really my vibe. I don't know if I have the personality to shoot a wedding because like everyone's so loud and outgoing and bubbly and I'm very reserved, quiet and detail focused. I like to kind of hang back and be in the background. So second shooting was really good for me. So I was always like, no, 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 I'm not doing it. Uh, Once a lot of people started reaching out, I finally was like, okay, maybe I could do one if it's someone I know, because then at least it's not someone I don't know if I mess up. Right. They're not going to hate me. You don't feel awkward. Yeah. yeah. So a girl that I went to high school with, she had reached out. I had told her no, and then I reached back out to her, and I was like, you know what? If you still need someone, I'll I'll do it, because I've done so many weddings with Lindsay. Maybe I see how the day flows. I can maybe do it. She's like, oh, my gosh, I'm so excited. Yay. So that was my first one. I did that in 2016. And then I actually booked four weddings that year of my own that I was really surprised. It was just people I knew or people that knew me through someone else I knew. Mm -hmm. So I booked four then. And I still at the time was like, no, I'm building up my senior program. I'm not doing weddings. Like I was very much fighting weddings. I was like, I'm not doing it. I was just doing it for people I know. And then um, once I did four, I was like, oh, it's not really that bad. People actually listen to me, even though I'm quiet. Um, maybe I can command a wedding day. Mm -hmm. Maybe I could do more. We'll we'll see. We'll like start to dip our toe in more. So then 2017, I did a bridal show, um, in Jeff and then in Columbia. And that's how I first booked clients that I didn't know. And when I was surprised, I was like, wow, wow, these people are, they want me. They're trusting (laughs) me. I have no idea. Like this is wild. So I booked, I started booking people I didn't know in 17. That was my first year of like filling up my schedule pretty full with weddings. Mm -hmm. And I just kind of like learned as I went. 
Um, I tried to create a really good experience for people. My significant other at the time was my second shooter, so that was helpful. Um, and I had a lot of people in my corner who were like, you can do whatever you want to do. Like, you can make weddings your career. There were also naysayers in the background, like, you should get a real job. But I always yeah, was always. like, always. Like, yeah. But once I was successful, they were like, good job. We always knew you could do it. We're You're so like, you proud liar. of you. <laughs> yeah, no, no. There was definitely the people that were like, you should get a state job and play it safe. But I always was like, I'm not doing that. That's not my vibe. Yeah. So, yeah, 17 started the full-time wedding gig. Um, and then I kind of felt bad because I was like, I really didn't plan on doing this. But here we are. And um, <laughs> so then 18, 19, I had full schedules. And I was, like, impressed every year that it just grew and it was – just like word of mouth mm -hmm. I've never paid for like marketing or mm -hmm. any of those things like it was word of mouth or people that had been in weddings that I did mm -hmm. um, like bridesmaids or family they would be like oh I, I've got to have you shoot my wedding and it kind of grew that way organically which was nice which I was just like wow this is really it's really happening I guess we're doing weddings now and yeah. so it just kind of took off from there and now that is primarily what I do weddings yeah. engagements and all that so do you still take family, seniors, all of that? I haven't done seniors since I think like 2018 because they just got to be a lot mm -hmm. <laughs> to deal with. Um, doing all those sessions, engagement sessions and weddings and like having time to have the seniors come look at their photos and because I would do a whole reveal session and right. bake them brownies and treats and bring everybody over and do the whole thing. And that just got to be too much to keep up with that. Um, doing engagement sessions and weddings. So I cut those in 2018. But I do occasionally do family sessions for like past clients. So like past couples that I've photographed their wedding, I'll do that or yeah. for friends. Sometimes yeah. I'll do maternity for past couples, but it's few and far between. Yeah. I mainly just do engagements and um, weddings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You sound a lot like me in your journey to getting into this where it was like, yeah, okay, fine. Like everyone's talking me into doing it. I guess mm -hmm. I'll do it and see what happens. And then it's like being shot out of a cannon and you're like, Literally. oh, there's no getting off of this yeah. ride. No, this it definitely so felt fun. like that. <laughs> definitely felt like that from the beginning because I, I was just, I was very much fighting it where I was like, I just want to do seniors. I don't want to do weddings. But it just kept happening where I was like, I guess I have to build up a wedding business now. Here we are. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so one of the things about you that I always tell our clients, you know, because there's sometimes our clients come to us with absolutely no vendors booked. Mm -hmm. um, and when I give them suggestions, you know, about a photographer, it's always like, okay, well, what's your style? What's, you know, important to you? And, you know, you're always at the top of our list of like people that we give to our clients. And one of the things that I say to them, I'm like, listen, if you're impatient, you want to work with Morgan because your turnaround time for galleries is nuts. Yeah, I, I'm i kind of a psycho. So I I have a brain that if I have things on my plate, it just gets too chaotic in there. So I'm like, I would rather just get it done and off of my desk, like out of my queue. And really, like it still takes the same amount of time for me to edit a wedding from start to finish. So if I just sit down and do it. Mm-hmm. I'm going to get it done faster than if I, like, wait. Once I start putting days in between, like, the last wedding, I actually got sick. So right. then I started to be like, ah, I don't really want to edit it. It's like, right. the more You're not time that passes, I'm it. not as excited. So if I just sit down right away and I just start going at it, mm -hmm. and I, I have my TV in my office, I watch reality TV while I edit, I listen to podcasts, mm -hmm. um, usually, like, reality TV-related podcasts. Yeah. And Get I it, just... Girl. That's what I do all day. So it feels like I'm not really working because I'm keeping up with TV. Yeah. Doing that, listening to podcasts. So I just sit and get things done quickly. People are always like, what do you do? Is someone else editing for you? Do you send your stuff off or do you do AI? No, I do everything. I tried AI once. It was a disaster for me. But you're also like very honest about the fact of like, you don't have kids. You're I not don't. married. Your yeah. significant other lives somewhere else. So, like, you're just kind of like, what am I going to do? Yeah, I live by myself <laughs> with my dog. So it's just me and my dog, and I have a lot of time where I'm, like, I'm a night owl. I stay mm -hmm. up super late. I'm usually up to, like, 2, 3, 4 a.m. It's terrible. I think every photographer is a night owl. <laughs> yeah, every I hate the mornings. I hate the mornings. So I, 
I just stay up late and I edit and that's how I turn things around quickly. I try to get every wedding done within a week, which Crazy. is very doable if yeah. you sit down and do it. But yeah. everyone thinks I'm nuts or I, there's a lot of people that'll say like, oh, you're not putting as much quality into your work or you're not. Which is not true if you look at the gallery. You're not delivering the best work that you could do. It should take this long. Like, I've definitely had people reach out to me or DM me or email me and say that I'm, like, giving a bad look for everybody else. But I'm like, this is just what works for me. Right. This is what I do. Right. And my clients love it. Yeah. And they are always like, oh, my gosh, these are great. So I try to do quality and quantity. Yeah. A lot of people are like quality over quantity, but I'm like, if I can do a lot of photos and they're good at the same time, like I feel bad cutting things out and not delivering because I'm like, who's to say that they might like a photo better than I think? Like, "Eh, maybe I'll throw this one away, but they might like it more than I would. So I try to give a good amount of photos and do it in a quick amount of time, but still deliver good quality. Right. So like... If we're talking about your packages, you know, if I send over a client to you, you have several different packages. Like, what do those look like? So I have two different collections that I have and then hourly coverage. Pretty much everyone will book my top package because it comes with an engagement session. So I do full day coverage. I, as someone, I was a bride before, um, I wanted my full day documented without having to worry about the clock. So Mm -hmm. I know there's a lot of photographers who do like six hours, eight hours, 10 hours, whatever. Every wedding day is different. Mm -hmm. And it felt really difficult for me personally to like price hourly, how many hours, because a lot of times they might just need nine and not eight or 10. Right. So it's like, it, I'm already there anyways. Like I'm, mm-hmm. I've already committed to doing the day. What's another hour or two right. staying? Right. So I do full day coverage, which I start with um, usually when they're finished up with hair and makeup. And then I stay an hour after first dances. That's how I classify it as full day. So I cover mm-hmm. all the main events. So they do f- um, full day coverage. It's me and a second photographer. You get your online gallery. And then the top package has an engagement session in it. So I'll do a two hour session. Usually we'll go to a couple locations and then I deliver usually like 150 to 200 images from the engagement session. And then I promise like 175 to 100 images per hour um, for a wedding day, but I've never delivered less than a thousand for a gallery. Um, The other collection is the same wedding day coverage. It Mm -hmm. just doesn't include the engagement session. Most people want the engagement session because they're wanting to do save the dates or put it on their wedding website. Also, it's the only time you get to be engaged if mm-hmm. you do it right. And um, so having those photos during that time is really special. Yeah. So uh, most people choose to do it. And it's also helpful to get to know your photographer, see how I shoot. A um, thousand percent. I always I, tell people that. Yeah. Yeah. I think especially for a guy. Yes. Those engagement sessions are so important just to get them mm-hmm. loosened up and like used to how you do things and then you can usually tell the ones who have done an engagement sessions oh, yeah. and the one the ones that haven't mm-hmm. because you'll be like okay nose to temple and the ones that haven't are like what, what are, are you, you talking yeah, about 100 percent. and most guys are not fans of sessions like I would say probably like 80% come in like, this is not my thing. I don't want to be I here. I suck at pictures. Pictures are them. not my vibe. Yeah. I want to go eat and yeah. drink a beer. That's usually what their vibe is. But by the time that it's like midway through the session, they're usually loosening up like, oh, this isn't that bad. Because mm-hmm. I try to do it where it's not stiff. Like I try to get them to interact with each other, show the connection that they have, and just let them have fun with each other. So I do like some more... Like, I'll do your traditional poses, but I'll also do, like, some playful poses to get them to kind of have fun together. And when I do that, you can kind of read a couple's vibe, too. Like, if they're going to – some couples aren't going to like doing that stuff. Some will. But a lot of the guys will be like, oh, this isn't that bad. This is really fun. And by the end, they're like, wow, I could do this every weekend. Right. So once they've done a session (laughs) with me, I'm always like, wow. okay. (laughs) Sure, my guy. Once they've done it – by the wedding day, they're like, I know what you're going to do. Like, then mm-hmm. they're ready and they feel more like pros Yeah. on the wedding day yeah. if they have done it. Then we're, we're kind of like 
you're on a time schedule on the wedding day. So when they haven't done a session, I can always tell because I'm like, I'll try to run through really quick. All right, this is what I'm going to do. Stay here. I'm going to do these. I'm going to give these micro movements and adjustments because people will start like moving around. I'm like, no, 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 stay in place. But if they've done an engagement session, they know like, they know how we work. Yeah. yeah. We don't want this lady yelling at us. Yeah. Not you that don't. you ever would. <laughs> Very quietly. <laughs> yeah. So you talked about the hours of coverage and it being really wedding day coverage. And mm-hmm. I can totally attest to that, you know, with our last couple that we had together in December, you know, Brendan and Jack, and it was a really fun day. I mean, it was freezing cold, but it was a really fun day. <laughs> and you guys ended up staying we much stayed later. The whole time. Yeah, we definitely did. We were just back in that room and I was like... They're just so nice. And their vi- their reception party was so fun. So we were packing fun. up where we were like, we're leaving. But then the game was on. So we, we, we stayed and watched that. And then by that time, I was like, well, their last dance is coming up. We might as well just stay and do it. Yeah. I, I don't usually do that. But Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, Mizzou was in the bowl game. Yes. So you guys stayed for that to make sure that we won. And we did. We sure Let's did. Let's go Tigers, which was an epic celebration. It for really those was. Tiger lovers. Mm-hmm. And then they wanted to do a private last dance, which nine times out of 10. A lot of does people don't do that. Not, they don't do it. And it doesn't get documented mm-hmm. or it's me on my iPhone, which is like tragic. Mm-hmm. And some of those, their <laughs> last dance photos were some of my favorite in the reception gallery because there's mm-hmm. such an intimate shot. There's nobody else in the background. Mm-hmm. It's just the lighting. I didn't have any of my other flashes out, so I just was like direct light on them. Um, and I thought those moments were really cute and really intimate. And mm-hmm. it's something that I don't normally get for couples. Mm-hmm. And so I, I really enjoyed doing it. I wouldn't want to stay at every wedding day probably that long, but yeah. They were a really sweet couple where I was like, I don't mind staying. It's the last wedding of the year. We're here. They won the game. Let's let's just ride it out. Plus, it was Taylor Swift related. Mm -hmm. That's my girl. You're Swifty. All day. Yes, we love Taylor. So I was like, I know the last dance is Taylor Swift because your timeline had that very clearly stated. So I was like, we might as well listen to New Year's Day. Mm -hmm. So we did. Yep. On December 29th. Yep. I love it. Um, yeah, it, it does always make a difference when the couple is just like nice yeah, and kind 100%. and gracious, mm-hmm. you know, like we've had some great couples, obviously, but they were just they so were kind. very kind. Their families were super welcoming. Everyone was kind to us all day long. I loved all their little dynamic, like their relationships their wedding with their guests. Fam- were yeah, kind. their guests were nice. <laughs> Her grandfather was the kindest man. I loved that guy. Oh, he is very in the gallery. Yes. <laughs> You'd see him Shout all Shout out to Charlie. Yes, I love that guy. He was like, hey. We just yes. kept waving at me. So I like to watch all the family dynamics and the cute little relationships that they have. And they just had really kind people around them that it was fun and easy to document. Mm-hmm. I agree. It makes it easy to go above and beyond for those yep. kinds of people. <laughs> 100%. But we've also had you know, some other mutual clients together and some really fun days. Mm -hmm. Um, But would you say that most of the weddings that you do don't have a planner? I would say, yeah, most majority do not have a planner. I usually end up being the planner. Yeah. For majority. Yeah. I've only had a planner probably like I've done over a hundred and some weddings. I've probably only had a planner like maybe 10 times total. And we've been like three or four of those. <laughs> yeah, you. Yeah, I think I've done three with you. Um, I've done one in, in Jeff with another planner, and then the other ones were like in St. Louis. Yeah, which were nightmares. But well, that's sad. Yeah, a planner with a nightmare. That's not fun. Yeah, no. So, I mean, what would you say is the main difference? And like, yes, of course, this is my podcast. And so I want to talk about the benefits of working with a planner. planner. But like, why is it? And I'm also genuinely curious. Like, why do you feel it's important for clients to have a planner? I think on the back end itself, a planner is very helpful to a couple because couples, they haven't been married before. And so if it's your first time you're planning a wedding, you don't know what all goes into it. You don't really realize all the stress of it and all the opinions that come from family and friends alone. Um, There's just a lot of decisions to make and it can be a lot all at once. So I think a planner can be very helpful with like lining out Mm -hmm. timelines. This is when you need to do this. This is when you need to send out these. This is when you need to pick this by. Kind of gives them an idea of keeps everything on track in the Mm -hmm. background 
to keep things going well, to make yeah. sure everything is planned out well, everything is concise, everything is good, you know, in the background. But then on the wedding day itself, they're kind of there to like, if they're a good planner, mm-hmm. there's, yeah, they're not all equal. So <laughs> they're, if the planner is good and then they're, you know, very attentive to the bride, they have assistance helping them where... They're like fluffing out the train. They're carrying the bride's dress so it's not getting dirty. There's just little things that they don't realize Mm -hmm. in the background that are very helpful to making the day a success. But helping with that and then just being there for anyone in the background, like family, the planner is always running around doing crazy things that I'm always like, where are they going? What are they doing? Like Mm -hmm. they're just, they're all over the place on the wedding day that you don't have to have family or friends doing that. Like they can be there to enjoy the day where the planner can take care of all those little details. Like Brendan and Jack had those shoes made. Mm -hmm. A lot of people will have stuff like that made, but they'll forget Mm -hmm. on their wedding day. Like, oh yeah, I'm supposed to change these earrings and put these shoes on. But the planner, you bring it out and you're like, here, here's your shoes, put these on. And then that way they get to do their full, all of their ideas that they wanted without forgetting. Somebody doesn't have to remember, like, that's the planner's job to kind of keep all of that stuff in check. Yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, when I am first working with a photographer who I haven't worked with before, I'm I'm always very upfront and saying, hey, we might do things a little bit differently than what you're used to. And some of those things you talked about of, like, I, I really act like our bride's personal assistant assistant. yeah you definitely do that Mm -hmm. I am making sure that her train is not getting ruined Mm -hmm. on the golf course or you know whatever that might look like I'm the one holding the umbrella or Mm -hmm. assisting them in the restroom and I don't know because obviously I've only ever worked for myself yeah so I don't know if other planners do that but um, I'm always very upfront with photographers because I'm like, listen, I want you to do your job. Right. Allow me to do my job. If you want a train moved, girl, I will do move it that day. train yeah. 45 times for you. I'm yeah. happy to do it. I want you to have perfect photos. Yeah. But yeah, I think I you know. do a good job on wedding days, like keeping things running smoothly. You work well. I mean, we've worked well together. So like yeah. I, pr- I run a tight ship with like I try to keep the timeline going, keep things smooth running and then I just think that together we've always done a, a good job serving the clients together yeah so that's I think that's the key yeah that's the key making the clients happy both of us doing our jobs mm-hmm. and doing them well that's the best thing you can do for the clients for sure and you know integrating timelines you mm-hmm. know because you have all the things that you need to have done I have a master timeline of everything, everything yeah. that needs to get done but I need to be able to put those into our timeline and you're always very good about your timeline but actually staying to it yeah I try to keep stay on the timeline I try to match mine up with yours so when we go back and forth like our timelines might be off a little bit so I always try to keep it lined up so that ours aren't going against each other Mm -hmm. because I know other photographs photographers aren't necessarily like this is my timeline this is what I'm doing and I'm like it's better to just work together if the planner's there like work together as a team yeah it makes the client's experience so much better 100 percent yeah yeah so okay so we've kind of talked about all the things but how would you describe your editing style I mean I know right now And your shooting style, because I know right now, like a lot of my clients are being like, oh, I love the documentary style. And I'm like, yeah, I do, too. But like, is that what you're going to want in 20 20 years? years. Yeah, I think there's a lot of new trends, obviously, coming in. I learned in the time where everything had to be perfect. Mm -hmm. So everything was like perfect, clean backgrounds and perfectly manic. Like everything was done in a way that you... Make sure everything is flawless. Now it's kind of more just like snap whatever you see. Everyone likes this very photojournalistic documentary style. Mm -hmm. Cricket photos, blurry photos. That's not you. It's just not my vibe. (laughs) Sometimes I'll try to be like, oh, I guess I should take a blurry photo. And then I'm like, what am I doing? I don't love it. But um, sometimes I'll have my second shooter like, if you want to be creative and add in some blurry right. photos, I'll make sure they have the ones in focus. I don't know. There's a lot of trends. So I I definitely do a traditional, I guess it's tradi- like I'll do traditional poses because I think those are very important. Mm-hmm. Like if you look back at your grandparents' pictures, like it's a traditional photo. They're, mm-hmm. they're smiling at the camera. I think it's important to have those, but also have ones where they're interacting. So like mm-hmm. 
I'll offer, po- I'll do poses with like prompts or have them kind of like interact with each other or give them prompts that create genuine reactions. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people like like the candid photos. Mm-hmm. Unless the couple is super lovey-dovey and into each other and all over each other, those candid moments are not happening. Yeah. I think there's, like, a misconception of, like, that people just think these things or happen. on our wedding day, we're going to be like that. Yeah. That's, I don't... I can remember two times I saw my husband on our wedding day. Yeah, a lot of... That's what I tell people. I'm like, a lot of times, bride and grooms are the couple. They're not together. Yeah. Like, they're off kind of separate a lot of the day. And so, if you're not together, it's hard to document those candid moments. I think candids are awesome. Like, there's different parts of the day where I will do candids, like, you know, the reception. Right. Things like that. Whenever I'm just watching what's going on, documenting like that. But a lot of times if I just took a bride and groom, like, do whatever you want. Right. They just stand there and look at you like, what do dead. I do? Yeah, dead face, I don't know what dead to eyes. Do. Yeah, they're not just... But, yeah, if they're if the bride and groom or the couple, if they're interacting with each other and being cute, I try to document those moments in between. But I think my style I try to give them direction Mm -hmm. give them poses give them prompts and usually because of the connection and love that they share they'll look different than other galleries just because they have a unique connection that whenever I'm like do this they might laugh or giggle or do something like that so I definitely do like posing and prompting right or even, like, getting those candid moments, like, when they're walking. When they're walking, yeah, or if they're having, like, a cute little interaction with a grandparent or someone they're close to. Like, I try to watch out for those moments. Right. But I'm not somebody who just stays in the background all day and doesn't tell you what to do and just documents candids all day. Because yeah. I know that's very popular right now. Mm-hmm. And just, like, shooting on the fly, like, oh, this is happening. That's not my – that's not the way I shoot. I know it's definitely a trend right now that I have a lot of people reaching out being like, well, do you do this? And can you just do candids? And can you? Mm -hmm. But I think it's a you just have to educate people of like, unless this is how you are, Mm -hmm. this isn't going to happen. Like, I'm going to have to give you direction. A lot of poses or photos they're finding on Pinterest or seeing on Instagram. Those aren't candids or TikTok. Yeah, TikTok's ruining it for everybody. Yeah. So they're like, oh, this this candid shot is so cute. And I'm like, most likely the photographer told them to walk and bump hips and now they're being all yep. giggly and it looks like it's candid, mm-hmm. but it's probably not. It didn't probably happen in a candid moment legitimately. So, right. yeah, Which I is mean. just fine. Yeah. I mean, those pictures are just as cute mm-hmm. as if it was just happening naturally, which again, does not really It happen. doesn't usually. Like there's... I can think of like a handful of couples that I've had who truly would interact that way. And yeah. it's easy to document that because that's just how they are. Mm-hmm. Most couples aren't like that. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I definitely do like some traditional posing as far as styling or editing. I try to do more like true to life, true color. Mm-hmm. I try to stay away from a lot of the trends of like there. there's always trends going on. And mm-hmm. I think there's a time and place for all of them, like – Mm -hmm. everyone's style that's their art that's fine but I always try to stay within like the true tone colors Mm -hmm. like a brighter style classic I feel like it's going to stand the test of time where when people look back at it it's not like I really wish I wouldn't have done this trend at the time so yeah that's how I would that's how I edit I guess yeah well your galleries are always absolutely gorgeous and I do think you know you have your buckets of like super light and airy True to color and then like dark and moody. Yeah. That's kind of always what I ask our clients of like, which way do you want to lean? Because I have great people for, for every all single of one them. of those yeah. styles. Mm-hmm. And no one is better than the other. Yeah. You know, 100%. It's but, up to the client what style they lean towards and all of that. So, yeah. I think the biggest thing, and this is really what I preach to our clients, no matter what kind of a vendor you're looking for, you have to make sure that you vibe with that person. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. I'll definitely meet with people and your vibes just don't flow. And then I'll meet with people where it's just like you hit it off right away. You're like mm-hmm. laughing and joking with them. You just vibe. And so it's easy to do the wedding day with them and then usually the ones where I'm like oh, we don't really seem like we hit it off they'll usually like go a different direction yep. or which doesn't hurt my feelings because I'm like there's someone else out there that will better be a better fit for them that, totally yeah 
Totally. I. It's funny because my husband and I both work from home and our offices are literally just like across a hallway, like not far from each other. And I'll get off a sales call and I'll be like, well, they're not booking me. And he's like, <laughs> he'll yell. He'll be like, why did you say that? And I I'm say like, that all the time. I just know. Like, yep. you, you just know. A hundred percent. Because I, I will literally say that. I'll be like, well, that wasn't great. I was yeah. like, they're not going to book me. He'll be like, my boyfriend will be like, why? Why, why, what were they wrong? I'm like, everyone loves you. I'm like, no, they don't. I'm like, no, we didn't go together. They need somebody that's super outgoing and super bubbly and just all like, no. And then they won't. They'll be like, oh, we actually went another direction. So, yeah, I always know when I'm like, that's not a good fit for me. Yeah. You got to vibe with them. Yeah. A hundred percent. You have to, especially because. I mean, from your perspective, like you are up close and personal getting in All their day. business. I, they'll spend the most time with me a lot of times on the wedding day mm -hmm. and then their spouse, their significant other. So you have to vibe with the person that you're hiring. Mm -hmm. And so I get a lot of brides that are more quiet or they're very detail oriented. They're very kind of like type A. Mm -hmm. I get a lot of brides like that who love a schedule. They love a timeline. Mm -hmm. They love everything very organized but the people that are coming in like oh, I don't really know like whatever I just want you to kind of shoot what's going on and I really like upbeat and blah 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 and, and I can be upbeat but I'm more I keep it chill so usually people like that go a different direction because yeah it's just not me so do I like majorly stress you out no like all, <laughs> all of my friends are really bubbly like yeah. I've always been drawn to people who are outgoing and bubbly because it balances me out with yeah. my chill vibes yeah and I am outgoing once I know people mm -hmm. but it takes a long time for me to like open up and yeah get to know people yeah, yeah. so your sister mm -hmm. is a videographer she is um I mean and I wouldn't consider her to be like a super chill she's like pretty upbeat she's she's always been the outgoing bubbly guy, person of the family yeah, yeah. I could see that. She's always had like all the friends coming over and I always had like my smaller group of friends that mm -hmm. remained the same. And she always had a big group of friends. She was always oh, yeah. throwing parties and she's yeah. very I think the last time I talked to her, she was like, sorry, I'll text you back. I have everyone over here for a F UFC fight. I was like, okay, girl. Yeah. <laughs> she's always hosting stuff and she loves to be outgoing and bubbly and she's always been that, that vibe. Yep. So did you ever guess, I mean, growing up, that you guys would be in the same industry? I mean, not really, but we, as as kids, we were always doing video. Like, we made home movies all the time. We pretended that we were the news anchors and the weather anchor people. Um, nice. We always did that. Like, every weekend, we would set up a camera on the tripod, and we would deliver the news <laughs> for hours. So funny. And then we would watch it back, and then we would do videos, like... We would write movie scripts and we would all play parts in it and we would make people sit and watch that. Of Feel course. Bad for our parents. But we, we were always doing that. We were always videoing. We were always, I always say like we were ahead of our time, like before TikTok, we were always dancing and yeah. we, were all, we were doing all the things before it was a thing. I know. Yeah. I could have been a bajillionaire by now. I was like, we really were ahead of our time because we... We were always videoing. We were always outside doing things. We were always on the go with a camera or video, mm -hmm. camera in hand, yeah. So, I mean, it makes sense because we always, we were close growing up, all mm -hmm. me and my siblings. Um, so, my brother did video actually first. Okay. Yeah, he got in and out real quick. Um, <laughs> He's like, not for me. He just, he, he wasn't charging enough for what he was doing and he yeah. got very burnt out very quickly um, and he did, he likes his weekends. So once he got out of it, she was kind of like, oh, I, I like it. I'll do it. So yeah. she kind of like took it over and made it her own thing. Yeah. So do you guys work that often together? We did in the beginning. We worked a lot of weddings together, um, but now it's more like fewer and further between. Like usually we'll work a couple a year together. Yeah. But yeah, she does like they're two separate businesses. So a lot of people yeah. think it's the same business, but it's not. Um, so she'll she has her own clients. I have my own clients. Sometimes they'll realize we're related and they'll hire us together. Or sometimes people are like, what? You're related? They have no idea. Because you guys don't even look alike. I don't think we look alike. A lot of people say that we do, but I don't. 
I think maybe if I saw you side by side with your faces like pressed up against each other, I'd be like, oh, when we were related. when we were young, everybody thought we were triplets. Me, my sister and brother, like everywhere really? mom went, everybody thought we were triplets. But yeah, well, we were all blondes back then. OK, mm-hmm. OK. But yeah, I don't think we look that much alike now. Yeah, not that much. Um, yeah, I think I only had like two weddings with her this year. I think I have like one or two this year. Yeah. Well, you're both fully booked. Yeah, she she keeps a tight schedule and same. Yeah. 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 So how many weddings do you take in a year? I take 20 to 25, except I have went outside of that range this year. So. Yeah. uh, We're going to see how that goes. Yeah. So, I mean, what would be kind of the goals of your business moving forward? I mean, you're obviously kind of opening things up in terms of how many weddings that you'll take in a year, but... Like, what are your goals? I mean, like, my goals, I feel like, are just to continue to serve people, serve couples well. I just, I've never had, like, a set, I need to make this amount of money. Yeah. I've just always done it because I love to do it. Mm-hmm. And it's not ever been, like, I must make this much money. I must charge this much money. I must get this much money out of all the people. I just, I like to do it. I enjoy doing it. And I make, like, a comfortable living where I'm good. So I'm, like, I just want to keep doing it as long as I can serving people as long as I can I don't I just I don't have like a lot of oh I want to shoot here and I want to shoot there I just I like to shoot at new places I like to meet new people so as long as I can continue to grow go to new places go to new venues that I would say is my goals I don't have like a lot of it sounds terrible but I'm like that's just my that's just me yeah Yeah. Well, I think in mid-Missouri, we have a lot of really cool venues. There's Mm -hmm. always something that's upcoming. And, you know, I tend to hear about things and photographers hear about Mm -hmm. things pretty early, you know, in the stages of planning for new venues. But um, I mean, do you travel outside of mid-Missouri? What does that really look like? Yeah. So I travel outside of a, like a two, oh, 120 mile radius so like within two hours of where I live I'll travel to and I don't add additional travel fees because like to me it's like two hours isn't that bad yeah you could write it off on your taxes it's like that's I just go two hours outside anything outside of that then it'll incur a travel fee but I've done destination weddings um and things like that but yeah I just Mainly I do mid-Missouri, Columbia, Jeff, but occasionally I'll be in like St. Louis, Kansas City, places like that. I've never done Springfield. I would like to do Springfield and Branson area, but. Yeah, that's on my bucket list is I really want to do some Top of the Rock. Yeah, the, that venue looks great. Yeah. I think that would be a really cool venue to shoot at for sure. Um, yeah. It's ultra beautiful. It's very pretty, yeah. Maybe we'll get to do one together. Together. At Top of the Rock. They'll hire you. You hire me. There we go. There we go. Okay. So I always end the podcast with asking our guests, if you were not doing your current job, what would you want to be doing? And it could be like far-fetched. Like, I think I actually changed mine. <laughs> based on this conversation um, because you brought up TikTok and like old school YouTube. And I think my actual dream job is to play with children's toys on YouTube because that's (laughs) all that my three-year-old watches. And those people Those are wild. Yeah, people (laughs) watch those. I I don't understand it. They have like millions of views on that. I know. My little cousins were like that. They would just sit and watch that. And I'm like. I know. I'm like, Augie, can you get off? Can yeah. you get off of that and go play with your toys? And he's like, no, mom. I'm like, no, I can't. Um, but no, I, before photography, I always wanted to be an interior designer. That was, oh, yeah. I went to school for a bit um, to study interior design. I always watched like HGTV, all of that. So I always was like, I'm going to be an interior designer my whole life. That's what everyone thought I was going to do. Mm-hmm. So I would probably do that or... Um, I another thing I want to do is open a venue yeah (laughs) shocker a lot of photographers want to do that yeah but um that's something that is on my list of things that I would want to do um or therapy a therapist I act as a therapist a lot in this job yeah you you really do so um a lot of people come to me for advice they always have since I was young so Mm -hmm. I therapy is something else that I would 
would want to do probably. I probably need therapy and I also provide therapy. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't I don't necessarily take my own advice, but I'm good yeah. at giving everyone else advice. Yeah. Yeah, me too. I like to say I'm paid for my opinions. Yeah. I love giving them. 100%. You yeah. need to sit down and tell me about stuff? Let's do it. Yeah, I love when people sit down and tell me like what's going on and I can help provide some kind of a resolution. Yeah. I eat that shit up. Me I mean, too. stuff up. That's okay. You're allowed to say whatever I you want. I was like, oh, no. You know me in real life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it'd be a interior designer, therapist, or a venue owner. I like it's it. It's a wide range. I like it. Gives a good variety. Yeah, you know, I'll open a venue and, like, have therapy sessions in the week. During the week. <laughs> That's a great in my idea. Office. Yeah. yeah. And then it. I'll decorate it really nice. Well, yeah. They'll all go together. Yeah. Of course. Um, a venue, if you have not been to it, that kind of blends love of interior design and a venue is Stonehouse in St. Charles. It is. Oh, I've seen. I've, absolutely beautiful. One of I my all, favorite venues. I really do want to shoot there. And I've talked to couples who are getting married there, but then I've never booked a wedding there. It's all restoration hardware. Oh, yeah. That's and just I've... beautiful. Coolest groom suite. But it has yellow light. That's the only bummer the yellow, part, but yeah. it's really pretty. Yeah, I definitely wanted it see that venue that is one that i like i follow that one it's mm -hmm. nice mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well thank you so much for being a guest of the podcast you did great <laughs> thanks for having me give yourself a pat on the back I know, I was like, you made it sweating i love it we'll have to get your sister on here next time yeah good Chat luck she's busy she's always oh, on know. the go man she's always doing stuff yeah. crazy and then come to find out your aunt is also in the wedding industry she is marcy mm -hmm. she's the best she is. She's great. Does weddings, um, desserts, all that. Crazy. Now I'm craving scones. I know. I'm going to go see her after this. She's like, come visit me. Oh, maybe I'll go too. Yeah. I need a snack. She She's uh, doing a photo shoot tomorrow. So she's making like goodies for that. And then she's like picking a winner to win the box of goodies she oh, made. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. Shout out Wish Flower. Wish Flower Bakery. We love you, Marcy. We do. Well, thank you again for being a guest on the podcast. And that's all for now. Ta-ta. Thanks so much for tuning in to this week's Pearls of Wisdom podcast. I'm your host, Ashley Miner with Delight Events. As always, you can find us all over the internet by following us on Instagram at Delight Events Mo and on Facebook. And please consider leaving us a review here for the podcast. Subscribe if you're on YouTube or on Spotify. Thank you and we'll see you next time.